What's up YouTube, it's Sean here, and I'm here today to give you a review of the Tom Sachs Nike Craft General Purpose Shoe in this dark field brown colorway. Today's video was sponsored by Hefalux. When it comes to sneakers, comfort is king. So when you buy a pair of shoes and find out they're uncomfortable, one of the easiest fixes is to swap out the insoles. So that's where Hefalux comes into play. If you check out their website, which I've linked down below in the description box, you'll see they sell a variety of ETPU insoles, which really is the same material you'll find inside Adidas Boost. So if you're looking to add some additional comfort inside your shoes, be sure to use the code SEANGO at checkout and get 15% off your entire purchase, and be sure to tell them I sent you. So this right here is the latest colorway in the general purpose shoe, which is a collaboration between Nike and artist Tom Sachs. So these released on February 7th for a price of 110 US dollars or 145 Canadian dollars. And the official colorway for this shoe is Pecan or Pecan and Dark Field Brown. So I reviewed the previous two colorways of the silhouette on my channel as well. So basically everything you've heard in those videos is gonna be more or less the same in this one as well. But for anyone sticking around for this video, much love and much respect. So let's dive straight into the details and I give you guys a closer look. So just like the other two pairs, this comes in the exact same orange colored box. So we have Nike Craft branding on the very top, and then on the side of the box, we have the name of the shoe, General Purpose Shoe. And then on the very bottom, we have this message which reads, Own Less, Do More. As for the shoe itself, so the majority of the upper of the sneaker, as you can see right here, this is crafted using this knitted mesh material. So this mesh, according to the website, is tightly wound enough that it makes it water resistant, but it's still gonna be breathable to some degree. Overlaid on front of the edge of the toe box, we have this brown colored overlay, which essentially is like a thick paint, which adds some level of durability. But honestly, from my experience with the past two colorways, after a few wears, this area here does begin to crack fairly quickly. Moving on, overlaid on top of this, we have this brown colored suede, and the same brown suede covers the eyelets of the shoe as well. Beneath this on the mid panel, you can see we have more of that brown colored mesh. And then overlaid on top of this, we have this dark brown swoosh. And then underneath this, we have more of that brown suede, which runs along the entire length of the shoe. Moving downwards, you can see we have more brown suede, which wraps around the bottom of the heel. And then debossed on the top of the heel, we have the Nike word mark. And then attached to the heel, we have a black colored nylon pull tab, which helps the wearer get their foot in and out of the shoe a bit easier. As far as the laces go, so these only come with one lace option, and they're a flat style lace done in a bit of a darker brown tone. Underneath this, so the tongue is padded in a layer of foam, but then overlaid on top of this, we have this thin brown colored mesh. Attached to the top of the tongue, we have another pull tab, and this intertwines through this tag on the top of the tongue, which features Nike branding in black and orange. So the interior of the shoe is lined in this microfiber textile, which gives it a soft and a little bit of a cozy feel to the touch. And then wrapping around the back of the sneaker, we have additional padding right here, which helps to hug the back Achilles area of your foot. As far as the insoles go, so these come with a typical foam line insole, nothing too special about this, but it's covered in a black colored mesh on top, and we have Nike Craft branding stamped on the heel. Underneath the insole, you'll see that instead of a strobo board, your foot actually sits atop this full-length EVA foam core. And this is where the majority of the comfort of this shoe is coming from. And then this EVA core sits atop this full-length rubber midsole, which is painted in this dark brown color. And if you take a real close look, it has a subtle textured finish to it. Finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, so this outsole is constructed out of a black colored rubber. It almost has a trail shoe vibe to it with this very exaggerated waffle style traction pattern. And on the heel, you'll see once again, we have Nike Craft branding. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this shoe. And for those wondering about sizing, so for the past two colorways, I've had the chance to wear both true to size and a half size down. And on a personal level, after wearing in the pairs, I preferred going a half size down, which gave me more of a snug one-to-one -one fit without dealing with the heel slippage that true to size gave me. So my feet measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. And for those other two colorways, when I went with a size 10, the width of the shoe was great, but there was a bit too much heel slippage because the length of the shoe was a little bit too long. So because of that, I went a half size down. And after dealing with the initial break in period, after you soften up the shoe and really wear it in, it definitely forms to your feet and it fits so much better after time and with wear. So with that trail of thought in mind, I also got these in a half size down, which was a nine and a half men's or 11 women's because keep in mind this shoe is released in women's sizing. 
and I'm pretty sure this is just a manufacturing flaw because my right foot fit me perfectly, but for some reason this left foot, it fit a bit snugger than those other two colorways that I have. So at least for the pair that I have in my hand right here, at least for my left foot, I think sticking true to size would have fit me better, but for some reason my right foot, going a half size down as I usually do, fit me fine. So again, this is probably just an inconsistency with the factory, some sort of flaw, but let me know in the comment section down below if you notice if your pairs fit a little bit more snug than any of the prior two colorways. If you don't want to risk it, and if you have really wide feet for example, or you just like more of a roomy toe box, then go with your actual measured foot size, and remember to get your women's equivalent, go up 1.5 sizes. So if you're a men's size 8, get a women's 9.5 or if you're a men's size 11, get a women's 12 and a half. Anyways, that was really long-winded. So now moving on to the comfort of this pair. So again, my impression of this shoe was a little bit tainted because my left foot felt quite snug, but at least from the initial step in comfort perspective, when I compared it to those prior two colorways, it feels pretty much identical. So my experience is straight out of the box. You might not think that it's that comfortable of a shoe, but trust me when I say the more you wear them, the more you break them in. You're gonna soften up both the insoles and that EVA foam layer within the midsole, it does soften up and form to your feet. And once you do, at least for me, this becomes a very comfortable sneaker and one that I feel feels great underfoot. You can definitely feel some of that softness with that EVA foam, but it also feels quite stable and supportive because of that harder midsole. So the comfort, at least to me, is definitely one of the main selling points of this silhouette. Finally, in terms of the overall quality and the craftsmanship, so first off, material quality, I thought it was decent. The suede's are definitely a genuine suede, and I'd say that it's a bit above average in terms of what Nike usually uses from a suede perspective. And then beyond that though, the rest of the shoe is largely synthetic, so we have a lot of meshes, a lot of fuse overlays, and things like that. So from that standpoint, it's not the most premium materials that you can find on a Nike shoe, but for what they give us, it is above average. And from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, I thought it was just okay. There were some slight blemishes on the suede and the midsole area of the shoe, but really nothing major. The stitch job was solid. The panels were cut consistently. So for a shoe that's 110 US dollars or 145 Canadian, I'd say that you pretty much get a lot of value for the price you pay. So with all that out of the way now, let's toss these on feet, I'll lace them up, and I'll show you guys how these look. So of the three colorways of this general purpose shoe that we've gotten so far, the first colorway to me is the most wearable. The cream tones pretty much go with anything you wanna wear. And then the second pair, the yellow one, that to me was the loudest and the most bold. It's much more of a statement piece on feet. And then this one, for sure it has the most mature vibes of the three pairs. Brown and dark brown, this mix really reminds me of a true dad shoe. So I can understand why this colorway isn't the most beloved of the three to release so far. To me, I just think this colorway is okay. Obviously, a part of the reason why people want this shoe, myself included, is because it is a cool Tom Sachs collaboration. And I know people always say that if this was just a general release sneaker, it would be in the outlets and things like that. But at the end of the day, anyone that buys this to some degree is a little bit of a hype beast, I'll admit it. This is a really cool collaboration, and Nike has definitely won me over with this silhouette. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this general purpose shoe in this dark field brown colorway. Of the three colors to release so far, how would you rank them from best to worst? I'd probably go with the cream colorway as first, the dark sulfur or yellow at second, and then this one at third. But whether you agree or disagree, drop a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram at esco8 follow my Twitter account at Sean.go and visit my website at SeanGo.ca. So until next time, thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this review and I'll catch you guys all in the next one.